the ability to manipulate our environment, to leverage our environment, to move from one human power to human plus horse, to human plus six horses in a chariot, to thousand horsepowers has made an enormous difference. What's different today and what's really interesting is not only are we beginning to develop technologies that leverage what we do as individuals, I think we're beginning to engineer viruses, bacteria, plants, animals, and humans to the point where we are taking, or beginning to take, some deliberate control over the evolution of our own species and other species. And that means that Darwinian rules quit applying in a certain extent, not totally. But Steve Gullens and I think that's a big enough deal that we're becoming a different hominid. We're becoming a homo evolutus that is beginning to directly and deliberately not just adapt to its environment, but shape its own evolution and that of other species. And that's a big enough change that I th we think it's an order of magnitude of Neanderthal to sapiens. As I went through college and graduate school, this digital world started to come in, which collapsed every alphabet in every language, Chinese, Japanese, Cyrillic, Aramaic, Egyptian, into ones and zeros, and it collapsed every photograph, and it collapsed every video, and it collapsed every film. And that became a really powerful alphabet. And that's what's generated most of the wealth in the world over the last 30 years. Now what's happening is we're in a different transition where alongside the digital world, we're, we're beginning to understand how to read and write life code. And first we understood how life code was written, then we understood how to photocopy life code with cloning, and now we're just beginning to write it to the point where the first synthetic cell has just been created last year. Um, and as you're thinking about the consequences of that stuff, just as the digital world absolutely massively changed how and where we live, how we work, what we value, this life code is going to be a much bigger deal because it works across so many things that you make not just so many things that you process information in, but the interesting thing with life code is it actually makes stuff. So not only does it process information, not only does it move across a whole series of industries, it is a very powerful lever to alter almost every economic system. As technology evolves, as religious systems evolve, as beliefs evolve, they're co-evolving with what we're learning and they're creating a moral ethical framework for the technologies that we're dealing with. Some of those technologies are really powerful and we really do need a, an ethical, moral backbone to it. Some people will turn towards religion to get that, other people will turn towards ethics, other people will turn towards IRB panels. Um, there are whole different ways of dealing with it. But what's really important to understand is these belief systems have to partly guide and have to partly evolve. And when you start thinking about the implications of being able to take a mouse skin cell, turn it into a stem cell using four basic chemicals, and then letting a full mouse evolve out of that skin cell, it means you can begin to photocopy a whole series of lives out of almost any cell. Yeah, that might have a few ethical religious implications if you're religious.